Hello there, welcome to episode 45 of Nevermind the Bullens. My name is Mike Peters, this is your bite-sized Everton podcast and vodcast. Uh, recording this in the wake of the uh, hard-fought uh, win away at West Bromwich Albion. I uh, apologise for the slight delay, I said this would be available last night, uh, Thursday night after the game, but uh, I'm in the middle of moving house. Uh, which has been uh, somewhat testing me, because I'm sure you can you can understand. Um, but although it has uh, produced one of the most surreal moments of my life, in that a man walked up off the street, a man from Romania, uh, and just bought my car off me. My old car, I should point out. I do have another one. This was sort of my work van, and I've just decided to sell it. Absolutely bizarre. Anyway, back at the football. Uh, it still didn't affect me uh, not watching the match last night, although, to be fair... Um, it could have been the best two hours sleep I, I could have had because it was not exactly a, a, a fantastic spectacle. But nonetheless, we got the result. That's the absolutely crucial thing. Um, I'm just looking down my notes from what I wrote for the uh, previous episode and basically it's almost the same stuff again, really. I mean, the team selection uh, last night, obviously there's rotation, but obviously we are affected by injuries at the minute. Uh, we've suddenly got a sort of a, a cluster of them, you know, really key players actually in terms of uh, the particularly sort of in midfield Tom Davis obviously not available Hammers as well uh, Robin Olsen not available although obviously Jordan Pickford is in tip top form just at the moment but you know we've managed to get through that but it's been obviously reliant much like the Southampton game on Monday completely reliant really on the starting 11 being able to um, sort of get us through the games and you know one or two players coming off the bench and being able to make a difference and no question that Gilfie Sigurdsson did that last night Alan came off on as well of course um, but that's not brilliant, but we've just obviously now got to get through uh, next Monday against Chelsea. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, and then hopefully some players will be back. They shouldn't be too serious uh, and injuries because we can't keep relying on 14 players to kind of do the business for us if we're going to now having got into a position where we are right you know right in the on the, on the cusp of the top four we're, we're really in the mix now for it and um, with Leicester and Manchester United faltering a little bit obviously Leicester being affected by injuries quite badly um, and I do feel quite sorry for them actually because I, I really enjoy watching them play um, but um, and I hope that they do actually get one of the Champions League spots at the end of the season because you know they were really unlucky last season to miss out just on the last day having been there for the whole sort of season um but you know it's allowed us opportunity strikes and you've got to take that opportunity knocks and you, you you know we've got to be in a position now we are in a position and we've really got to pick that up three wins in on, on the trot three clean sheets in a row that's absolutely massive and just as massive is the fact that Richarlison I mentioned this uh, in the previous episode is now really uh back and firing on all cylinders and Carlo uh, did uh, mention that after the game uh, I talked about us being clinical because I don't think we were against um, Southampton on Monday but against West Brom we didn't really have that many opportunities Dominic Calvert-Lewin obviously had that really good chance at the end of the first half um, Sam Johnston saves it but arguably should do better because he really kind of just hits it at him and we took the one sort of chance that we that we had uh, great delivery from Gilfie Sigurdsson um, and Richarlison and Johnny on the spot getting in there and, and um, heading it in um, we rode our luck a little bit got a, you know another very fortunate VAR decision um, in in injury time uh, as we did in the derby at Goodison back in uh, but way back in October uh, but nonetheless you know we've been on the receiving end of some stinkers over the few year, last few years so you know it's yin and yang it's uh, sort of things do balance themselves out um, so you know we, we move on um, we have to again back four looking very solid Jordan Pickford made a fantastic save uh, early on in the game from Dianya who obviously had that goal ruled out in uh, injury time Sam Allardyce bemoaning a penalty that they didn't get uh, when Mason Holgate um, uh, fouled one of their players I forget who it was now but nonetheless I, 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 I see his point because there have been penalties given for less this season but that doesn't mean that they were all penalties and this one should have been as well that's just that they've made a number of incorrect decisions and that people have you know been very um very sort of uh, sticking to the letter of the law and very kind of hard faced about doing that um uh, very rigid um, and obviously that's the result. You're going to get a lot of very, very soft penalties, which in the pre-VAR era, you, you wouldn't have got. Um, you know, you look at the Fulham game uh, and that handball decision that was given against them and that meant they had a goal disallowed, an absolutely crazy decision, really. You know, common sense. When the ball hits the guy on the arm and, you know, his, his arm is right by his side, he hasn't moved, it smacked it in from yard and a half. This is one of the problems with, with VAR. Um, but, you know... We had to just grind the results out, you know. Um, Carla mentioned it after the game, and it was asked of him, and uh, the question was asked of him, and I thought, yeah, it's absolutely right. I thought the exact same thing. We're not going to be able to play free-flowing football all the time. 
Um, we haven't played that lately to anyway. Um, and this is that business end of the season. You know, we've got 12 games to go where we've really just got to start to grind results out. Um, I'm sure there'll be games where we do play some excellent stuff, but teams absolutely fighting for their lives, teams fighting for Europe. It's it's going to be somewhat attritional uh, at times, and we've just got to make sure that we, uh, when we need to, are able to mix it up, get him in the, in the fight, which is no doubt with the, the physicality we've got in the team that we can absolutely do that, and we take the chances uh, that we're given. If we can play some wonderful, easy-on-the-eye football, then, hey, fabulous. Um, you know, long may that continue. That's obviously what we want to see. But I think, you know, it's interesting when we're sat there, and I was guilty of this as well, watching the game last night and looking at some uh, other Everton fan accounts and saying, well, we're just rubbish, aren't we? I'm thinking, we are in terms of it's not great to watch, but look at where we are. You know, 46 points from 26 matches. If we'd been offered that at the start of the season, we'd have all absolutely bitten everybody, whoever offered it to you, you'd have bitten their hand off and probably their arm and possibly even their head as well because you'd just go, whoa, yeah, I'm taking that. No question about it. You know, a few points ahead of um, Liverpool, obviously, and it just shows how far, how far what an unpredictable league it is. Um, and obviously now actually potentially in the hunt for, we're only a matter of a couple of points off, off Manchester United with a game in hand. And we're really in the mix to finish, never mind fourth, we could potentially finish higher. I mean, that is, you know, it's a long shot, but it could happen. Um, next up, of course, Chelsea uh, on Monday. And now, uh, given the lead table, that's an absolutely massive, massive game. Um, our record at Stamford Bridge isn't good. We know that. We've not won there since um, 1994. Um, and... You know, I, I'm absolutely confident, given our away form this season, that we can go there and get a result. That said, um, the way that they've, uh, sort of the rejuvenation that they've had on the Thomas Tuchel means that I think if we went and got a point from that game, um, really played it, fought really hard, I think it might be a really good game of football to watch because both teams want to attack. They play, you know, football with a pace they want to move the ball quickly forward you know they will have space in behind their the wing backs and all the rest of it um so to be able to it should be a really really good game um uh, real interesting tactical battle as well and i'm sure carlo knows exactly what he's uh, going to do to to sort of set us up to uh, to beat uh, thomas tuchel's team a bit of alliteration there um but i think you know if we lose we lose. It's not the end of the world. We're still in the hunt for the for the top four because we do still have a game in hand. But if we could get a point, um, you know, if we won, well, fantastic. You know, we're back ahead of them and with a game in hand. But if we're a point behind them with a game in hand, having played them, you know, taking four points off them this season, that's a terrific return. And then we've got Burnley coming up uh, a week on Saturday. Um, at Goodison, which you would hope that is a game that obviously <laughs> in the past we've been, it's been a bit of a mixed bag for us. We've either played really well at home and won comfortably, or we've just, you know, uh, that game a couple of years ago, we just capitulated and, and blew the game by a goal to nil. Um, when uh, under the uh, the uh, fag end of Ronald Koeman's uh, tenure, but you know, it's absolutely a game. Having dropped a couple of points there back in December when we were in a bit of a wobbly period of form, we absolutely need to start picking up that home form, having now got that win against Southampton, really starting to turn that and making sure that wasn't just a one-off, that we really get ourselves, our form at home up to where our away form is because it's going to be absolutely vital uh, at this late stage of the season. Uh, Rob Hawthorne, again, I mentioned him after the podcast on, um, on the podcast on, uh, after the Southampton game and he's making a few weird comments as well last night again I'm not quite sure what the crack is here apparently he was making I'd muted it to be fair for the second half but he was making comments about Abdullah Dekore and there was just some unusual things being said by commentators and I'm surprised that Rob Hawthorne and Andy Hinchcliffe for that matter were saying these things it, it, it's an odd one I don't quite understand there's been a lot of odd stuff said by commentators this season um, and you know last night w was no exception I'm not quite sure what the what the game is 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 there a narrative is i don't understand it really it's, it's baffling to be quite honest with you um that is it for episode 45 this has been a top content production i will speak to you uh, immediately after the uh, chelsea game on monday night i'll make sure that is up post-match as the game kicks off at six uh, until then come on you blues